I'm here in the Sawtooth Mountains high above uh, the Iron Creek drainage uh, that leads up to Alpine Lake which is just in this depression up here and then the trail goes further up around the corner to Sawtooth Lake and while we were hiking down uh, I saw this really impressive geologic feature uh, and so I scrambled up a ways from the trail to show you this uh, up close and personal um, so we've talked in other videos about the formation of the sawtooths, their rocks, uh, the glacial history that's here. So this is going to focus on uh, some features you sometimes see. Maybe we'll start with a view up here. And you can see just through the trees here, these very dark uh, lines cutting through the rock layers. There's one uh, just above these two trees over there. And then if I can reach out over here, you can see past the trees a really dark band of rock cutting through this otherwise white rock and that same band that's there to the north is the same rocks that are right here so you can actually see this rib of dark rock running right beneath my feet and in juxtaposition with this white rock so the white rock here this is just classic uh, sawtooth granite the 50 million year old uh, rock that makes up the bulk of the sawtooths, coarsely crystalline quartz, uh, potassium feldspar, a little bit of biotite, a little bit of uh, hornblende as well, I believe. Um, so there's the granite kind of splashed with all the lichen, and that's mainly what we're seeing in this view. But then we have these really conspicuous uh, dikes, these intrusions of magma, younger than the granite itself, that cut through the granite. And so these appear to be, I think these might be basaltic andesites. They could be straight up basalts. I don't have a hand lens with me. Um, so we'll just, we'll go with that for now. I'll put something, I'll do a little research and if there's any correction I need to make, I'll put that in the description. But you have this just amazing sharp contact between these essentially black rocks and these mainly whitish rocks. So it's just a, a beautiful, just contrasting color. And also a cool contrast in um, magma types. And so the granite would form with silica-rich magma that cools underground slowly. That's the recipe for the granites. Whereas these basaltic andesites or basalts are at the opposite end of the magma spectrum. And these would be low in silica, more rich in iron and other types of minerals. Um, and this is the type of magma that when it erupts to the surface, this is what forms the eruptions we see at places like Hawaii uh, and Iceland and so forth. Um, so really just a cool contrast in, in colors and in magma compositions as well. Uh, so this dike here, you can actually see it if I turn around to the south here. Uh, just past this talus field, you can see another outcropping of darker rock. That's a continuation of this dike, which is uh, maybe slightly dipping to the to the east or northeast here, but it continues over there beyond that outcrop though and into the drainage uh, Who knows if it if it continues uh, on up into the skyline there or not, but we can see it here We can see it just to our north. Hopefully you can see that in the walls there that jagged skyline That's just classic sawtooth granite being eroded along the, the skyline there making that kind of toothy appearance um, so a really cool igneous feature and while we're here there's a couple other things we could look at this is just a great spot you can see the granite here is just shattered and smashed uh fractured intensively and so and then you can see these big talus fields below me where rocks have fallen off these cliffs and tumble down and there's absolutely some enormous boulders. There's some house sized boulders, some car sized boulders in places. So these valleys get filled in over time with these big blocks of rock that are broken off of these cliffs here. And a couple of processes are key players in this type of terrain. So one is just frost wedging. So we get cold winters and even in the summertime we get cold nights and warmer days and the water that gets in the fractures in the rock uh, freezes and thaws and freezes and thaws and ultimately it splits the part of rock apart and so most of the fractures we're seeing here may have originally begun as cooling fractures within the respective rock type but they've definitely been accentuated and made larger uh, by the the freeze thaw cycles that occur up here in the mountains and eventually the the wedging of the ice in between the particles of rock the, the blocks of rock 
causes them to become detached and then they tumble down the slopes uh, down into the valley. The other thing that's a big contributor to this landscape evolution would be earthquakes. And so we just had an earthquake near the Sawtooth uh, in March of 2020, a magnitude 6.5 that was a significant event that was not only felt regionally, but there's uh, been a lot of rock falls documented that took place after that. And there's probably a bunch we don't know about, but there's been spires on some famous uh, rock climbing objectives that have tumbled off. There's been parts of the trail uh, that have been taken out. So there's definitely been substantial rock fall and erosion uh, by the earthquake itself uh, that's contributed to this landscape. Um, maybe the last thing we'll look at here quickly with this uh, basaltic dike is if we look at it, so it's nearly vertical uh, in its orientation. So as we kind of look down, down this rib of rock, we can see it's more or less oriented vertically. But what you can hopefully see, and I might turn around here and give you a view from behind me, but there's a lot of fractures running perpendicular to this dike. And if I wheel around kind of carefully here, we can kind of see there's broadly some fracturing definitely taking place. A lot of this could be frost wedging, right? Just shattering of the rock there. But even up close, we can see there's definitely some layering of the rock that runs perpendicular to the orientation of the dike itself. And these dikes are much like, you might've seen places that have columnar joints, like vertical columns of basalt or other volcanic rocks. And when a body of magma close to the surface is cooling um, uniformly, or even at the surface. So this is true for lava flows, but it's also true for dikes that are propagating up towards the surface. Um, when that lava is cooling and, so, and solidifying, if it's cooling more or less uniformly, the fractures will always form perpendicular to the cooling direction. So if you think about, um, it's hard to do this with one hand, but here's the ground, here's a lava flow, let's say, and here's the top of the lava flow. So the ground is cool, the air above it is cool, and that lava flow will develop fractures perpendicular to those two surfaces, so in this case, vertically. Well, in this case, the dike moved through the granite, uh, and so it was cool up against these rocks on this side. It was cool up against the rocks on this side, and so the fracture orientation tends to be perpendicular to this. And so these nearly vertical dikes, when they kind of break like this, this isn't a great example, but sometimes they can look like um, uh, bundles of firewood. So they're sometimes called cordwood fractures or cordwood joints uh, in the rock. So just a really cool spot. I wanted to just come up here and, and uh, look at this up close, share a nice uh, bird's eye view of the geology above Iron Creek uh, and up towards Alpine Lake, some of the sawtooth granite, the 50 million year old granite, uh, this pinkish to white granite that's so prevalent in here. Uh, and then these really conspicuous dikes that if you kind of just look along the ridge lines in places, you can sometimes pick these out. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Another fun video from the Sawtooth Mountains of central Idaho.